Hi, my name is Andrew Nari, and I am the Parental Engagement Campaign Manager with the Integrated Education Fund. This morning, we're going to talk about the Transforming Education Project. And the Transforming Education Project was started in 2020 with funding from the Integrated Education Fund and the Community Foundation for Northern Ireland and the Ireland Funds in cooperation with Ulster University. The Ulster University Transforming Education Project team has so far produced 12 papers and about four more are due to be completed over the coming months. The papers all focus on different aspects of the Northern Ireland education system. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Stephen Rosen, who is the project lead of the UU Transforming Education team to get a wee bit more information about the project and the papers um, that have been produced so far. Stephen, thank you uh, for taking some time out to talk to us about the project today. So I suppose we'll start at the very beginning. Can you tell us a wee bit about the background to the Transforming Education Project and, and what it set out to do? Thanks, thanks Andrew. Uh, it came about, I suppose, because a number of us felt that there were aspects of education in Northern Ireland which could be improved. Now, there's nothing wrong with the commitment of teachers in Northern Ireland or of school leaders or the work of many people in the Department of Education and EA and CCMS throughout the system. Everyone is working hard to improve the life chances of young people. However, there are, we felt, structural problems in the system of education that has developed in Northern Ireland, and we wanted to get conversations started about those. In the papers, we tried to be careful not to give glib answers to often deep-rooted issues, and there was a feeling that although we are educationalists with long experience of schools and of young people, who, who are we to be suggesting answers to some of these thorny questions? So we wanted policymakers and parents, communities, uh, politicians, the media, the general public, as wide a range of people as possible to talk about the issues raised and to get conversations moving about what we as a society should do about them. And I think we've succeeded in many cases in getting those conversations started. Okay, yeah. So you and Matt Milken uh, and other UU colleagues have all produced a number of the papers as, as part of the project. Can you give us a wee bit of an overview of the themes that have been covered so far? Well, there's a wide range of themes, Andrew. I mean, the first paper, uh, one of Matt's, actually dealt with the fair employment exception. Uh, fair employment legislation doesn't apply in schools in Northern Ireland, which was a surprise to many people who read that. And uh, politicians do seem to have taken that idea and uh, seem to be moving forward to seek a change to that. Uh, there was one about the governance of schools and the extensive church influence in that governance in, in both the Catholic maintained and in the controlled sector. Now, we're not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we're just raising an awareness of the extent to which it's in place. And we want the conversation to decide whether it's something that should be continued with as it currently is. Uh, there was one I worked with and a colleague with a colleague, Sally Cook, on pairs of primary schools, often in small villages. In the normal run of things, these villages might have just one primary school. But in our divided society, we seem to need one school for each community. And the danger, of course, is that often neither school is going to be sustainable in terms of numbers of pupils. And there's even a chance that in some places the, the villages might lose both schools with primary education lost to that community. Might one single school in that type of village be a solution? Perhaps. But again, we would like any solution to come from the local community and the planning authorities working with them uh, and not from us. Uh, let's see what else. Um, there was one on the certificate in religious education, the requirement for some teachers to have that and the impact that had in the system. Uh, we had one on academic selection and the impact of that on educational outcomes in North Ireland. That seemed to generate considerable debate, as you can imagine, including in Stormont. And it seemed to inform a generally well conducted discussion around the issues. It would be good to keep that conversation going. Uh, there was one on the additional cost of transferring pupils to schools after uh, uh, primary, post-primary transfer, uh, which um, was, was again uh, an issue. You know, there are costs to having such arrangements and considerable waste with pupils going past perfectly good schools to go to a school, perhaps because it's a selective school or it's a school serving one particular community. So there's a lot of waste in that. In fact, many of the papers focused on the waste caused by a duplicated, divided system of education. And with public finances as they are, that's something we need to address as a society. And there are also social costs of division, which might make the economic costs the least of our worries. And there are lots of other topics as well. Uh, all, all of these are available online, the UNESCO part of the Ulster University website or on the IEF website. 
Yeah, so so lots of the big issues then you, you've tackled head on there. So um, this event is part of Good Relations Week. And, you know, looking at that theme of Good Relations, what do you think are some of the key findings from the papers that have been produced? Uh, many of the papers touch upon the impact of, on people of a divided education system and the challenge of creating a cohesive and peaceful community in Northern Ireland. Uh, the system of education that we have emerged from division and distrust between communities and the state a century ago in Northern Ireland, even before that, in, in, uh, before partition, and divisions and distrust between the communities themselves uh, were part of that. Now, I, I think it would be naive of us to expect that changes to schooling on their own would address those divisions. But nonetheless, I think it's a key place to start. It has to go hand in hand with reforms to housing to address segregation there, perhaps to political reforms in Northern Ireland. I think we do need courageous leaders who will truly lead and who are not constantly looking over their shoulder at the narrow sectional advantages they might get if they take this action or make this speech. I think we need leaders who can take hard decisions, who can make compromises, who can seek positive ways forward and bring their communities with them on those difficult journeys. Uh, we don't pretend that these briefing papers will achieve radical change on their own, but if, if they get some conversations going about how our current system is unsustainable, and how we need to address our divisions within education to build a positive future for uh, and with our young people. If we can get those conversations going back by the hard evidence that we have in the briefing papers, then perhaps they might have some small impact. Yeah, okay. So I know as part of the, the Fail on Fobo Festival, uh, you and Matt did a presentation and you picked out some of the, the key themes and, and some of your suggestions for how uh, we can resolve those things and move towards a better system that, that works for everybody. But based on the papers then, what do you believe would be the main areas for the education system that need to be changed? Well, I think they cover all of the aspects of the briefing papers, really. We think school governance should be looked at. You know, who do we want to own and run our schools? And the answer might be that we're perfectly happy with the way things are, but we need to have that conversation, I think. Uh, how about RE teaching in schools in Northern Ireland? Are we happy with that being a largely Christian focus? There is a study of any two word religions at key stage three, but RE teaching seems to be overwhelmingly Christian. Many places in the rest of the UK, for instance, have developed a multi-faith non-confessional approach to RE. Why not here? Let's talk about that. Uh, parental choice. Do parents really have a choice as to where their children attend school? It seems to depend upon where you live, whether you have a choice of an integrated school, for instance, or an Irish medium one, perhaps that's okay. And we can live with that, but we should have an informed debate about it. Uh, where we prepare our teachers has been a hot potato for years, but do we really need four training providers in a place the size of Yorkshire? Why are teachers, some teachers trained in colleges which tend to reflect one community or the other? That would seem again, an unnecessary, even a potentially socially divisive arrangement that needs talked about. And another big one, uh, academic selection. It constantly surprises me that some communities that seem particularly badly served by academic selection, and we're talking about working class Protestant communities largely, but not exclusively, they are represented by politicians who should perhaps be looking harder at the education system to see how it could be reformed to deliver better for those people. And we need to involve those communities in honest conversations about the impact of policies like this. In, in short, we, we need to talk about a whole lot. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a lot on there. And I suppose on the back of that, we know that there's an independent review of education that has been commissioned and, and that is now starting to um, get moving. Hopefully we'll see that in the not too distant future. But given that upcoming uh, independent review, um, are there any particular aspects or themes from the papers that you would like to highlight? Uh, my own view uh, is that the independent review of education may be a once in a generation chance to reset the educational structures in this part of the world, uh, uh, to take radical decisions about education, to address division, to foster healthy and safe communities, to build a better and a more peaceful future for this place and for our children and for our grandchildren. Uh, and we're not alone in highlighting some of those things, the effects of academic selection and system of education, for instance, that is something that Noel Purdy of Stranmalis University College and his colleagues emphasized in his recently released report on underachievement. And, and even scholars internationally are writing papers about the negative influence of academic selection in our system. There was one this month just. 
uh, academic selection in Northern Ireland is such an anomaly now across the world that you would want the independent review to add their views on it to the other ones, the Burns report, the Costello report, a whole swathe of reports that have made recommendations about academic selections uh, largely ignored. Um, and if the independent review were to investigate the impact of academic selection and come up with a view of it, whatever that view might be, that would be really helpful in keeping a focus on that topic. Okay, that's brilliant. And there's still um, several more papers that need to be completed. Uh, but beyond that, uh, what would you like to see then in, in terms of next steps um, resulting from this project? Uh, yeah, we're, we've got four more papers in which we're working at the moment. There's one on, on differences between shared education and integrated education. Sometimes people seem to conflate the two when they're actually quite different. And that one's just about ready to go to press, as it were. Uh, there's one comparing the system in Northern Ireland with that in the Republic that I've been working on. Uh, there's one on citizenship education, the teaching of controversial issues, uh, and there's one on school ethos, which will be really interesting as well. Uh, next steps, uh, I think, I hope we have opened up some aspects of education in Northern Ireland. We've blown away the cobwebs, we've shown a light on them, and we've tried to do that in a way which is respectful of all sides, which recognises that schools are often at the heart of communities, and change is hard. But if we really want to improve our education system, and free it from many of the problems which has beset it, then change is needed. And that means fundamental change, not just tinkering around the edges. Uh, there is an old Chinese proverb, it's something like, when the winds of change blow, some people build walls and others build windmills. Let's see whether we can together help to build some windmills. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Definitely a lot for our educationalists and our politicians um, to think about. And thank you to you and the team uh, for doing that. And thank you for, for just having a quick chat with us today. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to come along and give us a little bit more uh, information on the project. For those of you out there that would like to know more about the different papers, um, you can find more information on the Integrated Education Fund website or on the UU Transforming Education Project webpage, which is in the description for this video. And also we mentioned Stephen and Matt's presentation for the Fela on Fabulous Festival um, in July, and you can look at that as well on our Integrated Education Fund YouTube page. It's definitely uh, worth a watch. So thank you very much, Stephen. I look forward to reading uh, the rest of the papers, and I hope we have a great rest of your day. Thank you.